Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to the 2021 London Master Builder Awards ceremony. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Eden, London Director for the FMB. We are here today to celebrate the brilliant work of SME builders in and around London. Now in its 17th year, the Master Builder Awards continues to be a flagship for outstanding building work. Our judges had a horrid time trying to pick just one winner for each category as the standards were so incredibly high this year. And you should all be extremely proud of the work that went into each submission. The FMB is a non-for-profit federation that only exists because of its members' determination to say, mediocrity isn't enough. Only the best will do, and only a master builder will do. I would now like to hand you over to Brian Berry, our CEO, to say a few words. And all that's left for me to say is thank you and good luck. Thank you, Sam. And I'm really pleased to be with you to help celebrate the FMB Master Builder Awards. What a journey we have been on since our last London Master Builder Awards in 2019. We have certainly been living through a momentous time. Now, though, is an opportunity to celebrate the very best in our great industry. The FNB Master Builder Awards are a demonstration of members' resilience and determination in overcoming all the challenges you have faced. And I'm pleased that we've done this together within the FNB. This year is the FNB's 80th anniversary, so we have an extra reason to celebrate our Master Builder Awards. The last year, though, is one none of us will ever forget, which is why it is great to be celebrating the positive work that Master Builders have been doing every day across the country. What the pandemic has done is to highlight the critical importance of the construction industry in supporting the economy and its recovery. In particular, our industry has allowed master builders to demonstrate what they do best, building, repairing and maintaining our homes and places of work. Against this background and wanting to acknowledge the fabulous work of master builder companies, we have added a new award for those companies that have displayed outstanding leadership business management and strong dedication to supporting their staff and clients. It is called the Building Company of the Year Award. Alongside this new award, we are also bringing back some of the most hotly contested categories from the 2019 awards, such as the renovation projects. All this seeks to show what we already know, that master builders are the best in our industry. From the Second World War to the pandemic, master builders have been there to look after our built environment, both in the good times and the bad. Please welcome your host tonight, a regular at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe, a regular on Radio 4, and a regular on the Frank Skinner Show on Absolute Radio, it's Alan Cochran. It's great to be hosting the London Awards Ceremony. I hear you know how to have a good celebration. After all the stories I've been told about previous London and Southern Counties events, I'm expecting big things on the social media front from the London region. Uh, anyway, let's get on with this. I would like to encourage everyone to join in this special occasion tonight, take part in the online chat, congratulate the winners, share images of the celebrations at your home, unless you're in jogging bottoms, in which case get dressed up and share images. If you're watching with colleagues, family or on your own, we want to see your pictures. Post your experience across social media this evening using the hashtag, hashtag MBAwards. I'd like to mention the sponsors who've made tonight's awards possible. I'd like to thank them for their continued support and commitments. This includes our headline sponsor, TradePoint. I would also like to take a moment to highlight the independent judges who spent many hours reviewing and discussing the nominations this year. We would like to thank them for their valuable time and expertise. It's now my pleasure to invite Gary Olson, FMB London Area Board President, to say a few words. Hello, I'm Gary Olson. I'm the London Area Board President. I'm delighted to be here joining you all for the first ever virtual London Master Builder Awards. Of course, the reason we're doing this remotely is obvious. We would love to be able to meet up in person. Hopefully not long now. You should all take pride in the fact that you're amongst the industry's finest building professionals. To become a member of the Federation is such a stringent process. A significant number of applicants fail to be accepted as they do not meet the rigorous standards we set ourselves. For me, being a member of the Federation, a master builder, is the pinnacle of our profession. 
We work to and deliver projects with a high standard in whatever sector we're working in, taking deserved pride in our work. Being a member is more than just having a sticker for our vans or a badge on our website. The public can be assured that the Mars Builder logo is a sign of expertise and trust. I've also met some of the best people who are master builders. A big thank you to all those who've entered. Based on what we've seen in the past, no doubt we'll see some cracking entries tonight. Good luck to all of you. Please join me and let's raise a glass or two and celebrate the fantastic achievement of our fellow members in London. Thank you, Gary. As you all know, TradePoint is sponsoring this evening's ceremony and Lee Taylor, National Accounts Manager, is here this evening to speak to us and give out the awards. Lee, over to you. It's amazing to be here for TradePoint as the headline sponsor for the London Master Builder Awards. Our partnership with the FMB has grown from strength to strength over the last eight years and I'm delighted to continue to support these events. It's been a tough year for the industry. However, I've been blown away by the resilience and expertise of many tradespeople across the country and I've no doubt the industry will grow massively over the next 12 months as things go back to some normality. Tonight is reward for the quality and attention to detail shown by these amazing members. Enjoy the night and good luck to all. Thanks, Lee. Now it's time to find out who the lucky winners are. I will introduce the 10 awards categories and you will see images of all the amazing projects and people who were nominated. Once again, the quality of entries received this year in London was exceptional. As such, in some categories, the judges agreed on giving out highly commended awards. This accolade is for members that missed out on winning by just a whisker. So if that's you, you could be genuinely proud to be highly commended. But there must be only one winner, and Lee will announce the winners for us. The judges have been highly impressed by the skilled craftsmanship, relationship management, business acumen, and problem solving demonstrated by master builders across London. So I will also share some of the judges' comments as to why a particular winner was chosen. If you are one of our winners today, you will receive a trophy in the post. Do enjoy your moment in the spotlight. Make sure to pop your comments in the chat box, post a photo along with the hashtag MBAwards. Right, let's get on with the show. Our first category this evening is for Small Renovation Project. This award is for excellent residential or domestic restorations, refurbishments or extensions, including heritage projects valued at up to £50,000. This was closely contested category, so let's see the nominees. To announce the first category award winner of the evening, it's back to Lee. And the winner for best small renovation project is... Zaluga Limited. The judges agreed that the builder managed to blend the materials with expertise and craftsmanship. The builder turned a client sketch into the finished product through careful attention and understanding. The judges thought this project was a brilliant use of the budget available, particularly as it had to include a rewire and complete strip out. Despite a tight timeline and budget, the builder produced a quality product for a very happy client. Next up, we have the award for best kitchen, which is for an outstanding kitchen from a new build or renovation project. Let's have a look at our nominees. Welcome back, Lee. Who is the lucky winner? The winner? For the Kitchen Award is... Hawksmoor Construction Limited. The 
Judges thought that this builder had a great connection with the client. The client's needs were fully understood and that the team worked with a very high level of professionalism and workmanship. The client said, the Hawksmoor team, what can I say, they were simply a joy to have around. Considering 2020 has been one of the weirdest years anyway, that the team were able to complete the project on time and to a high standard has been nothing short of amazing. Congratulations to Hawksmoor Construction Limited, a beautiful kitchen. Next up, we have the award for Best Bathroom Project, which is for an outstanding bathroom for a new build or renovation project. Let's have a look at the nominees. A great selection of projects. Lee, can you please reveal the winner? The winner of the Bathroom Project Award is... Home Republic Limited. The judges thought this project was a fantastic use of the space. The project had a great finish, creating a visually superb bathroom. Loft conversions can be difficult, but this has utilised the features and produced a lovely room. This proves that with good communication, experience and vision, a beautiful bathroom can be created. There was real attention to detail and excellent use of the natural light. The judges thought it was stunning. Congratulations again to Home Republic Limited for an excellent job. Next up, we have the Medium Renovation Project category. It's awarded for a residential or domestic restoration, refurbishments or extensions, including heritage projects valued at over £50,000, but under £150,000. Let's have a look at the nominees. Now the judges agreed on a highly commended award in this category. The highly commended award for medium renovation project goes to C1 Construction and Development Services Limited. Lee, can you please reveal the winner for the medium renovation project? And the winner is... Hawksmoor Construction Limited. The project converted the internal garage and added rear extension and turned this into a beautiful split-level family-friendly home. The judges said that this renovation project has really clever design and use of space with the split level. The finishing was immaculate and detailing was impeccable. The judges loved the pivoting room divider, which they thought was a brilliant solution. They noted the shapes and materials in the ceiling, angles of slate or brickwork, was very difficult but worked fantastically. Congratulations again to the team at Hawksmoor Construction Limited for an impressive medium renovation. What a great evening you're having, two wins already. Moving on, the next category is the Sustainability Award. This award is for green building projects that demonstrate commitment to reducing environmental impacts using a variety of methods. Let's have a look at the nominees. Lee, can you please reveal our winner? The winner for the Sustainability Award is... 
Ale and Callum Design and Build Limited. The judges said that this well-considered project put fabric first at the heart of the design. The judges highlighted very good features in this project, including passive solar, the air tightness achieved, MVHR, EWI, and the planning for future low carbon technologies. Achieving such a good level of air tightness in an existing building is a great achievement. Finally, noting it was a pleasing renovation of an older property, which was very well done by a company keen to learn and take their knowledge on to the next job. Congratulations to Earl and Callum Design and Build Limited for delivering a challenging eco build. Well done them. It's now time for the Commercial or Public Sector Project Award, which is awarded for an outstanding commercial building project or outstanding public sector project. Let's have a look at our nominees. Brilliant selection of different projects, I think you'll agree. Lee, can you please reveal the winner? The winner for the Commercial or Public Sector Project Award is... Architectural Limited. The judges said that this very impressive and unusual scheme was a unique and interesting project. The principal challenge was to build this project in a city centre site and therefore, as a sensible solution, the build took place off-site on a floating barge, then was towed from Tilbury Docks to site, approximately 25 miles along the Thames and moored into place. Architectural was closely involved in all aspects of the project. The judges noted the building looks impressive and appears to fit in well with surroundings and meets the client's requirements who is very satisfied with the build and finished product. What a brilliant project. Congratulations to the team at Architectural Limited. I'm now excited to introduce David Mead, a highly entertaining speaker and mentalist. He has been joined by your very own FMB National President, Jan Etchells, and Gary Olson, FMB London Area Board President. David's going to show you some of his impressive mind reading skills in action. Hi everyone, David Mead here. I so wish that I could have joined you for the entire award ceremony in the studio, but I don't know if you've noticed or not, there was a teeny tiny pandemic that unfortunately threw a massive, monstrous, huge spanner in the works that meant that I couldn't get my job done on spec, on budget, on time. But we decided that we would have some fun with some of your reps and members from regions all across the UK. So without further ado, let's read some minds. Hello, Jan and Gary. Thank you so much for coming and joining me virtually. How are things? Oh, good, thank you. Nice to see you. Uh, Gary, what a lovely background. Are you coming from your own private sauna or...? Uh, well, I'm coming from the spare bedroom of my house and behind me you can see XX uh, kid right? so there's no way that's going out. <laughs> Very good. Well, look, uh, it is lovely to see both of you. I want to try and experiment with both of you. Imagine for a second, so all three of us are going to go on a journey. Now, I want you to be as weird and wonderful with this as you possibly can. I really miss travel desperately before lockdown, the last week before lockdown. On the Monday, I was in Dallas, Tuesday, Philadelphia, Wednesday, Mexico City. I don't recommend it. It did. It smelled really badly. Uh, Thursday was Miami. And then, well, the Friday was Kidderminster, but but it was still an interesting week. It was a good week. So uh, I miss travel so much and I miss everything about travel. And I want to try a really easy experiment around travel with both of you. So in a second, I'm going to ask you to name some weird and wonderful random things. Very important that you don't let me influence you. And uh, Gary, we're going to start with you. Imagine for a moment that the three of us are going on a trip anywhere. Now, Gary, it genuinely can be anywhere in the world. All I ask 
ask is don't go with anywhere that you've been to before but also don't go to anywhere that you've got any plans to go to all right so um somewhere weird or wonderful nice and loudly and clearly gary where would you like the three of us to go mozambique mozambique wow okay that sounds lovely mozambique i have never been there before um cool mozambique that's an interesting one jan what about you i want you to imagine for a second that a celebrity anyone famous anyone in the public eye anyone who if you were to name their name out loud you're certain everybody on tonight's award ceremony would know who you're talking about jan it can be anyone what big famous person would you like to come with us on the trip alive or dead well i'd prefer alive it'll be a hell of a trip if you're bringing them back via seance jan does everyone know curtis stikers no, I don't think so. Good effort, John. Yeah, uh, it could be a politician. It could be a singer. It could no, that, be... That's what he was. That's what he was. Um, okay, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Great one. Excellent. I'm certain everybody... It also tells me a lot about your taste in man, John. I'll say no, it good to know. Like, that was the last thing I saw on television was Tom Cruise on Graham Norton. So that's what... <laughs> Super stuff. All right, Tom Cruise. And Gary, back to you. Imagine that we rock up to the airport. We look at the departures board and our flight has got a three-digit number give me a random three digit number one four two one four two now i want to be honest with you the answers that you give me always tell me something about your personality about how you think about the way that you make decisions gary the fact that you went with mozambique tells me you're the fun guy in the office uh practical joker rock and roll around christmas party time uh <laughs> i would also say jan the fact that you went with tom cruise tells me that you're kind of a mucky pup and everybody knows that yeah, um okay. and i would also say gary uh, the fact that you went with one four two that tells me that you're uh a, a sociopath, Gary. Uh, not a massive surprise to everybody else at the office. No, We're going to try and do this nice and slowly. Gary, was 142 like it wasn't a favourite number? It wasn't a lucky number? Doesn't mean anything to you? Is that right? It's the house where I grew up in. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, look at that. I'll be honest with you. Generally, people always go with something nice and random. Well, look, I, I, I miss travel desperately. And I'm always looking for little things that help sort of remind me of travel. Like, I love the old-fashioned parts of travel. I love luggage tags in particular. And even in this age of technology and data i'm always using an, a lovely old-fashioned luggage tag and before all of these events i sit down and i try and work out what are the type of things that people might say the type of locations the type of celebrities the type of numbers and i didn't get it spot on here only one of the things is right but nonetheless i think we may as well still look so i'm going to show you uh, just how close that we managed to get inside this printed luggage tag we can see brand new airline you might not have heard of them before and we are going all the way to mozambique with tom cruise on okay. flight 142 holy moly gary we did it how amazing unbelievable very good Fantastic. very very good lovely well look thank you so much to both of you for joining me enjoy the rest of the awards and hopefully i'll see you in the flesh really soon Thanks very much. Thank you. Take care, everyone. And if you would like to see more mind reading, then stay tuned. There is a little montage. Who doesn't love a montage of more mind reading after the show? Thank you, David. Wow, brilliant. The Tradesperson of the Year Award really epitomises what the awards are all about as it looks for evidence of professionalism, high quality projects, commitment to their trade and exceptional customer service. These are the mentors and role models to apprentices entering the construction industry. Without talented and dedicated individuals, we wouldn't have anything to celebrate here today. Let's take a look at some of those exceptional nominees for Tradesperson of the Year. Lee, can you please announce our winner? The winner for the 2021 London Tradesperson of the Year is... Mantas Gagadas from Contemporary Construction. Mantas impressed the judges with the way he tackles all of his project in a very positive way and with courtesy and politeness at all times. He demonstrates good management and control of his projects. While it was a difficult past year for everyone, 
Mantis has shown great understanding for the concerns of his customers and put them all at ease at all times with encouragement and commitment to a successful conclusion to their project. Mantis supports those around him and often arranges some outside of work activities such as fishing trips. Judges thought it was clear that Mantis runs a small but tight group of staff and delivers a quality finish to the satisfaction of all of his customers. Congratulations to Mantis Gadaudus. Our next award is for house builders and developers demonstrating a strong commitment to building quality new homes, either as bespoke one-off properties or as part of a housing development. Let's take a look at the nominees. Lee, can you now announce the winner of the House Builder Award? The winner is... Keys Limited. The judges thought that the builder completed this project to a high standard, putting the interests of the client and neighbours first. The team created seven new homes, navigating technical challenges to reconfigure the ground floor. The judges noted the very attractive brick facade incorporating materials saved from demolition of the old MOT station that originally stood on the site. The whole process of communication, feedback on designs and explanation of material deliveries was well received by the client. Congratulations again to Kiesel Group for creating those stunning new homes. It's now time for the Large Renovation Project Award. The category is for residential or domestic restorations, refurbishments or extensions including heritage projects valued at over £150,000. Let's take a look at some of the outstanding nominees. Lee, please announce the winner. And the winner for the large renovation project is... Ale and Callum Design and Build Limited. The judges for the large renovation category noted the steep learning curve for this outstanding builder who undertook training as a retrofit coordinator and achieved a 70% reduction in air leakage. The client stated that the transformation is amazing. We can't thank Earl and Callum enough for all their hard work and help throughout the project. Congratulations again to Earl and Callum Design and Build Limited for a truly exceptional renovation. Now that concludes all of the category winners announcements. Congratulations again to all the 2021 London Master Build Award winners. Thanks to the sponsor who made this evening possible, TradePoint. All that remains is for me to welcome back FMB National President Jan Etchells to wrap up proceedings. Thank you for being such a wonderful host for the evening. I'm delighted to be joining you all. Congratulations to all of the winners. I would also like to say a big thank you to all of you who tuned in and to all of our members who have submitted examples of their skills and talent over the last two years. 
They have made this a diverse, exciting and competitive award ceremony. We look forward to seeing all future nominations at the next Master Builder Awards. As some of you already hopefully know, during my two-year tenure as National President, I have chosen to support the Lighthouse Construction Industry Charity. The Lighthouse Club provides free support for mental, physical and financial well-being for those in the construction sector. It's such a worthy cause if you could spare any money towards the fundraising target, I know the team at the Lighthouse Club would be delighted. The details of the Just Giving page are on your screen now. As you know, the FMB is celebrating its 80th birthday this year and the amazing projects and winners tonight really do show off the best of Master Builders today. I am so proud to be representing you. So all that's left for me to say is a final congratulations to the London winners. I invite you to join us at the National Ceremony on the 24th of September to see if you are lucky enough to be driving away with the Isuzu pickup truck. Good night, London, and thank you. Here I've got two envelopes. One says mine and one says yours. Now, inside one of these envelopes, Joe, there is a £10 Amazon voucher. Joe, you say, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it's like we're on QVC. Now, Joe, I want to be clear. I do not want you to win the £10 Amazon voucher. Is that clear? That's mine, all right? So I don't want you to win it. But in a second, you're going to name one of these envelopes and you will keep the contents of it. This is a fair game, I promise you. I will ask, though, are you a lucky person? Have you won much before, Joe? Mm, I'm not. I'm not. A, I wouldn't call myself a lucky person, no. Well, look, let's see how well you do on this one. Now, what I will say, it is a 50-50. So, you know, the odds are reasonably good you're, that you're going to leave with a £10 Amazon voucher. But remember, I do not want you to get it. Now, let me talk you through the psychology and the science of this first, uh, Joe, because I'll be honest, the money is always inside the yours envelope. I always put the £10 Amazon voucher inside there. The reason I do that is because it's got the word yours on it, it kind of feels like it's already yours. It feels like you already own it. So I always put it inside there. Or am I saying that, Joe, to try and double bluff you, to try and catch you out, to try and make you pick the one that says mine. Because if you think about it, the voucher is mine, Joe, because it's not yours, it is mine. So have I put it inside yours to make you feel like you've already won it? Have I put it inside mine because it's mine? Or am I double bluffing you? At the minute, Joe, are you already drawn to one of the envelopes? Well, the mine's written in big letters as well, isn't it? So, um... so you're a little bit more drawn to mine. Okay, well, look, I'm going to help you out with this. A few little facts I'm going to tell you. The first thing is that in a minute, I'm going to give you the opportunity to change your mind. Now, if you do change your mind, I want to remind you that you didn't have to. If you don't change your mind, I want to remind you that you didn't need to. And the last thing I want to point out, but like I think you know this already anyway, is that mine is much bigger than yours, Joe. But look, don't be influenced by that. You can go with anyone that you like. Um, yeah, I'm going to ask you to name your final decision. What envelope would you like? I'm going to blast myself and go for yours. Oh, you're going to go with yours. I'm going to do this really slowly so that you can tell there's no funny business. I'm also going to keep both of the envelopes in full view so that you know there is no switching, swapping, adding or taking away. I'm going to open up this envelope and just show you what is inside the one that says yours. Now, can you see what's inside it? Some yellow piece of paper. There is a yellow piece of paper. Inside here is a yellow piece of paper. And it says £10 Amazon voucher, Joe! You won it! You won the voucher! Wow, what a lucky guy I am today, hey? <laughs> I'm telling you, you should give up the building trade. You're wasting your time and go to Las Vegas. So tell me, Joe, what are you going to spend the tenner on? Ten pound to buy me a nice doorstop, actually. At least the doors were hanging. So maybe I could do that for the client over here this morning. I think you should get an award for customer service. So there we have it. Well done, ten pound Amazon voucher. Um, look, I'm. It's honestly, I'm genuinely blown away that you've won that because I didn't want you to win it. I genuinely didn't. I mean it, I really didn't. I wanted you to win what was inside this envelope. Because what's inside this envelope, if you look really carefully, is there is 50 pounds, 100 pounds, 150, 200 pounds, 250 pounds. Joe, this would have been the best pandemic ever. But don't worry, you did all right. Well, I've got my doorstop, haven't I? <laughs> you do, you do, exactly. Look, I want to try a really easy experiment with you. Have you got a mobile phone handy, Rob? I have, yes. 
Okay, so open it up for me and go into whatever your internet browser of choice is. And I want you to search for any celebrity that you like. Anyone famous, anyone that anyone would know. Um, let's think, uh, I don't know if he's a celebrity. But... Now, I want to be clear, you're thinking of someone famous. Is there any way that I could know who this is? Not unless you have some supernatural powers. I don't know. I know I wouldn't have thought so. Okay, well, let's see. All I'm going to have you do, look me straight in the eye, Rob. Come close to the camera. Lean in. Come on, Rob. Lean in. Lean in. Come on in. Come on. It's like a Tinder date, Rob. So I want you to look me straight in the eye and say no to everything. Is this person a male? Say no. No. Is it a female? Say no. No. It is a singer? Say no. No. Is it a sports person? Say no. No. Are they from the UK? Say no. No. Are they from America? Say no. No. Okay, all right. I think I think I know who it is. I've made a little guess on uh, on the back of my pad here. I'm pretty certain that you've gone with a female and a politician, probably American. If I had to guess, I'd say you've probably gone with Hillary Clinton. Am I right? No. No. Who did you think of? Boris Johnson. <laughs> Did, oh, did you nearly think of Hillary Clinton? No. No, don't worry, neither did I. Oh my God. Diane, have you ever played cards before? Now, I'm not a big gambler, Diane, but I kind of like the statistics behind a deck of cards. Have you ever played cards, Dan? I have, yes. For the fun of it, I want you to imagine that you could read my mind, because here's what I did before we started, Diane. I got this deck of cards, I took one card, and I turned it upside down. Now, Diane, there's only one card upside down in this deck. Okay. Your job is going to be to try and guess which one it is. It's important that you know that this is entirely your random choice, Diane. You're going to name any card that you like. Seven of spades. I am going to be fair to you, Diane, because this isn't easy. You're under pressure. Lots of people are watching. If you want, I'm going to give you the opportunity to change your mind. Now, you can stick with the seven of spades or you can change your mind, Diane. It is very much up to you. I'm going to count to five, five, four. Three, two, one. Diane, what do you think? I'll stick with a seven of spades. Now, I'm going to do this dead slowly, Diane. Look how suspicious Diane is, everybody, by the way. Look how <laughs> suspicious. I'm going to do this dead slowly. I want you to check and make sure that no funny business, that nothing gets changed or swapped. I want you to make sure that I don't turn any cards uh, upside down, no sleight of hand. And we're going to do this dead slowly. Now, you will at some point see that one card is facing the other way. Now, please do make sure that I don't do any tricky business. Hopefully, yep. you can see that only one card is facing the other way. Diane, are you happy? Yes. I'm going to put that card out to the top. Now, Diane, you could have chosen any card in the deck. Once you were there, I give you the opportunity to even change your mind. You're stuck on the seven of spades. You couldn't be changed. You couldn't be moved. It tells me... You're probably very difficult to live with, Diane. But you stuck with the seven of spades. And let's see how well you did. Diane, I want to hear a drum roll from you. Karen and Breach, I want to hear a drum roll. Do we drum roll? Go ahead, do we drum roll? Hey, it's like the 12th of July. And the one card that is upside down the wrong way around is your card, the seven of spades. Well done, Diane. Thank you for taking part. Well done, well done, well done. Well done.